Well, after how successful the first one was, I thought I would need to go in and do some more videos on Nebulous Fleet Command. So looking at what people have been asking for, PD and PD Defense is something that a lot of people really want to know more about. And kind of tying for that information as well is how to use missiles and also just how radar and jamming works. So we're gonna have a look at all of those. The first video I'm gonna do is the one on PD because it's something that I think is very interesting, can be overlooked because it's usually an afterthought in your ship design, and there's a little nuance that you might not realize is there in the different modules and options you have for PD. Uh, we're gonna cover the five different forms of PD that are in, this in the game. There's three primary and two secondary, so that's three sort of directly mounted turrets and two missile defenses. And then I'm also gonna show you some integrated defense systems where we're using different PD together to defend against missile swarms at the end of the video. So hopefully that will help you when you're shipbuilding make good informed decisions on how to build your ships. Just some small notes before we begin. Uh, the, all the PD weapons in this game are defensive only, which means you can't just close into knife fighting range and slice your enemy apart with your PD, which is sad, but apparently there's some lag issues involved if we actually enable that. Starting off with the Mark 20 Defender PDT, it's a rapid fire close range to point fence weapon. At 15 points it's the cheapest turreted PD available, and it has its own integrated radar fire control system. This allows it to track and fire at independent incoming targets without needing to rely on your ship's radar, which is quite nice because if you only if you didn't have this, I think the way the game would work is it would only be able to fire one missile at a time, which is already a problem this gun has. Uh, the ammunition for it is a 20mm slug, it loads 500 rounds for one point, and it's ranged out to 1,750 meters, and is pretty accurate, usually hitting within 3 minutes of three meters of its target out to 1,000 meters. If this gun has any issues, is that it tends to overcommit to a target, which means that when it locks onto a missile, it will keep firing at that missile until that missile is destroyed, even if the first shot it fired would have destroyed that missile. So you can end up in situations where you have three missiles coming at you, uh, your gun fires at one of them, keeps firing at that one, keeps firing at that one, destroys it, and then by the time it can turn to fire at the next two missiles, it hit your ship. So you need to watch out for that. The Defender definitely has a downside in that because its shots have a travel time, it can take a while for it to retask onto a new target, which can put you in a situation where you're not as covered as you thought it would. Additionally, this weapon has a really high rate of fire, and it chews through ammunition very, very quickly. So it's really important that you take an appropriate amount of ammo into the game with you. Now, it can be quite hard to visualize the numbers that this gun deals with because it fires so many rounds, the rounds are so cheap, and they're so small. My recommendation would be to take an absolute bare minimum of 2,500 rounds of ammo per gun, which is five points worth of ammo, which makes the gun plus the ammo 20 points to spend. If you think of it as that's your PD package, I don't think it's really enough ammo, but it's a nice number to put your head around so you can use that as your kind of thing to go for. All right, so here we have what I would regard as a generic missile frigate. It's got two VLS launchers, two uh, defenders, up against three missile corvettes. The idea behind this little encounter is to just sort of show you what each different PDT can do on its own. So we've got an opening engagement here. Both sides are launching missiles at each other. Both sides have their own PDT. We're not too interested in what the corvettes do here. It's how well this ship can defend itself with the two defenders that it has and then we'll compare that to two rebounds or compare that to two auroras when it gets to their turn so you can see we're starting to deal with most of the missiles we've overcommitted to one and now we are getting absolutely hammered and we'll be destroyed by the incoming missiles so i think we managed to take out two or three missiles there let's see once i've talked about the other pdts how the other ships compare to the exact same scenario and we'll see how we go cool all right next up is the mark 25 rebound pdt the Rebound is an interesting weapon. It's an unguided, slower firing, inaccurate and low tech gun in a game that is very much focused around high tech weaponry. It costs 30 points for one of these turrets to be mounted on your ship, which is the same as two defenders. So we're looking at a weapon that's twice the cost of our previous PDT we looked at. And instead of firing out bursts of hyper velocity slugs, this weapon fires 50 millimeter flak rounds. These flak rounds travel to their target, detonate before they hit it, and create a field of explosion and shrapnel that the, tra the target or missile needs to travel through. The hope is that that explosion will detonate it, and it doesn't need to be perfectly accurate because it creates a cone-shaped cloud of shrapnel that will hopefully hit the missile. Uh, that is really good at mitigating the low accuracy of the weapon, and it isn't actually common to see the explosions from this take out multiple missiles as they fly through a flak cloud that is established, similar to um, the Battlestar Galactica flak cloud that was famous from that show. 
One of the things this gun doesn't have that the other PDT turrets, well, the PDTs do, is an integrated fire to control system. This means that it relies on radar from other devices in order to track its targets. It can use the radar from your warship, but if you link it up with other PDTs that have integrated fire control systems, for example, the Defender, it will use their radars as well, allowing it to track independent targets and fire at more missiles at once. This is very, very useful. And I think if you're not mixing rebounds with other PDTs, you're not using them correctly. They are designed to be a augmented weapon to work with mostly the Defender, to be honest, rather than just being used on their own. I will show you this in action later on in this video, and I personally use P the Defender and the Rebound together quite a lot because they're a nice cheap package that does a lot of work. The weapon has a two kilometer range, which is a little bit further out from the Defender, so it can start firing and dealing with incoming threats a little bit sooner, which means it can clear out some of the massive missiles leaving Defenders mounted on your ship to mop up the rest that make it through. Something to be aware of with the rebound is it does have a minimum range. The explosives that it fire have a minimum fuse on them that lasts 0.5 seconds before it'll actually detonate, which means that there is a sort of a dead zone quite close to your ship, around about 200 meters from your ship, where any shots at these where this one will fire incoming missiles will not detonate and will not be stopped. Another reason to use defenders with them. 50 meter flak rounds that this gun fires cost one point for 75 rounds. And due to the low rate of fire, it's not too bad to not need to take too many rounds. I personally take around 375 rounds per turret, which I think is an okay number. Again, that's five rounds, five points extra, making the package, as I like to think of it, for this gun and its ammo 35 points, which is still very, very little to spend. All right, just like last time, we have a basic uh, missile frigate here. It has two rebounds of two defenders as its main cannons. And the idea is just to see how it does in a generic missile skirmish against three missile corvettes. Again, it's not going to win this encounter. I'm just trying to show the difference between the different PDs and how they operate and what effective ranges they're good at, just to give you an idea and compare between them. So we're coming into the opening engagement now. It looks like we've only got one of the PDs able to get coverage here. And it's just not going to be enough on its own to do anything about the incoming missiles. Well, there's one missile taken out. It's only managed to take out one. It's firing again desperately. It took out one more, I think. And now the frigate has been destroyed. And this is a really good example of if you've been trying to use a rebound as your primary defense mechanism, you're just not going to be able to do very well. I'll show you later in the video how this gun works much better in tandem with other PDs. For now, let's move on to the Aurora. So the Aurora is the last PDT, meaning point defense turret. There's still two more point defense weapons, well, point defense weapons, two defensive weapons to cover after this one. But the Mark 90 Aurora is a long ranged, incredibly accurate point defense option that is honestly a little bit of a boondoggle, but it is extremely good at what it does. I call it a boondoggle because it costs 55 points for one turret, which is four times the cost of one defender. You can mitigate this in your head a little bit by the fact that it doesn't need any ammunition, so you don't need to equip a magazine to your ship. If it doesn't have a magazine, you need to pay points for any ammo, but it does require a lot of power to use. Its power draw is 700 kilowatts, which if you compare that to the Defender, which has 175 kilowatts, is again, roughly four times the power requirement. Interestingly enough, because the Rebound doesn't have its own integrated radar tracking system, it only needs about 20 kilowatts of power. It's a very low power requirement, but even still, the amount of power that the Aurora needs is quite extreme. And usually if you're adding it to a ship that you've already equipped and added modules to, already sorted the guns out on, if you're doing this as the last you know, ditch, I need to put some PD on my ship, you normally end up having to increase the amount of power available on your ship to accommodate this gun. However, it is excellent at what it does. It has a 3000 meter range, marking it as almost double what the Defender has. It's extremely accurate to that range, up to within one meter of its target, all the way up to 3000 meters. It pretty much hits every time it fires. And it burst fires, short bursts, that will usually kill, um, destroy a missile in that burst, and then it'll track onto the next target. Meaning it doesn't have the issue that the Defender has, in that it will continue firing at a missile until the missile's destroyed. With the added bonus, the fact that because this is a laser-based weapon, those laser beams will hit the target as soon as they are fired, rather than having a travel time, meaning it can retask really, really quickly. If it has one downside, it does need to cool down after extended fire, but you can battle short it with only a 10% chance of destroying the weapon, which is pretty good. All in all, the Aurora is an amazing point defense weapon with the downside of being incredibly expensive and a little bit difficult to mount. But if you have the points remaining in your fleet for it, and you can justify not spending those points on primary weapons, then it is something to look at. Okay, just like our other videos, we have here a Range Frigate with two Aurora PDTs, and we're just gonna put it up against, or with three Aurora PDTs, and we're just gonna put it up against the group of Corvettes that all of the other ones have fought, just to see how well the single PDT solution deals with a large swarm of missiles. Now, 
as mentioned previously, this weapon is way more expensive than the others, and I would expect it to comparatively perform well. So it's already taken out one missile. You can see that it's able to fire from much longer range. Because of the longer range, it's also able to get good track on targets, so all three turrets are able to fire, whereas the other ones which are shorter range, by the time the missiles get close enough to fire at, usually one of the turrets is occluded. And then we can see that it's been able to wipe out that entire barrage of missiles well before they got close to the ship. I think that's actually probably closer than defender range, uh, sorry, further out than defender range when it destroyed them all. So the Aurora is very good, demonstratively, but the price makes it very difficult to use. We're going to now look at the two missile-based defense systems, and I'll move on to them next. We've looked at all the different PDTs, or point defense turrets, but there are actually two more defensive options available to you, or active defenses. There are other defenses we'll talk about in a different video that you can use to defend your ships. And they're actually very, very powerful, but they do get overlooked by newer players. They are fired from the VLS-123 missile launcher, and they are both missiles. I feel like a lot of newer players, including me, when they're building their ships, build primarily the weapons first, and then they get to the end of their build process and they have a few PD slots to fill, and they end up fighting with each other. You've got lots of different options here, defenders, rebounds, auroras, and this missile launcher. And because the missile launcher has a limited magazine, I think that the defenders and the auroras, etc., win out and they get missed out and not mounted on ships, which is a shame because if you experiment with them, these two options are actually very, very powerful. Firstly, the launcher itself only costs five points and it fits in a two by two by two module slot, which means it can fit in anywhere that a uh, PDT can fit. So it is mountable on pretty much any ship. The only ship in the game that doesn't have any PDT slots specifically for PDT or PD is the Reigns. All the rest have these 2x2x2 two by two by two module slots that can only fit these weapons. Finding a slot for it, finding a space for it is, is maybe sometimes a bit hard, but very, very useful if you can get it on there. The first missile we're going to look at is the EA-12 Chaff Decoy. The EA-12 launches a very slow missile that after a couple of seconds will detonate and create a cloud of chaff. It only costs one point per missile, and this chaff will attract or distract most radar guided missiles. It's not 100% effective, it won't steal all of them from your ship, but it will distract some proportion of them, which means that's less missiles for your PDT to destroy, reducing that overwhelming barrage that comes at you. Be aware that I did say it will distract most radar guided missiles, so things like the missiles that home in on jamming signals will not be affected by this, um, this, chaff, this chaff cloud. Your ship AI will launch these missiles, but I find that it does it a little bit too late. So it usually tends to launch them as the missiles are getting very, very close, and sometimes the missiles will actually hit before the chaff missile has detonated, meaning the chaff cloud is useless. What I recommend you do is manually fire these missiles as they're incoming, so that you have a chaff cloud coming out from your ship, and then as the battle continues, just refresh these chaff clouds so that any missiles that come in and surprise you, or maybe a second wave of missiles, you still have the protection to protect your ship. You can manually fire them in two ways. One, you can right select your ship, right click in space, and select the FRE DCY or fire decoy option. Or you can select the ship you wish to launch the decoys on and press shift plus Z, which is the hotkey for fire decoys. In combat, what I like to do is just tab through all of my ships and keep hitting shift Z to launch waves of chaff missiles out from my ships to keep a chaff cloud in place, especially during that very early engagement where everybody has full magazines of missiles. You've got big missile swarms coming into you. Having a large chaff cloud is very, very useful. However, this is very micro intensive, so it is a bit overwhelming and it gets hard to manage other things while this is ongoing. But in general, if you are the target of a large missile barrage, all you really need to do is weather the storm. So launching the chaff missiles isn't too much of a detriment to your combat effectiveness. One thing to be aware of with the chaff, however, is when the chaff detonates, it reveals to your enemy an unknown radar ping, pretty much at any range. So if you launch chaff at the wrong moment, you can reveal your ships to the enemy. A savvy enemy commander could launch thunderheads at you across the map in the hope that your ship captains will notice the missile flying by or flying close to their ship, even if they don't know where you are, and launch a chaff missile to protect themselves, and that can cause them to reveal your fleet and find out where you are. So I recommend, or thinking about it at least, putting your chaff launchers on manual until you get into an engagement and then switching them to auto. Now that may sound counterintuitive because I just told you that you need to manually launch these missiles, but as combat goes on and you get distracted and missiles are flying everywhere and combat is ongoing, having your ships able to automatically launch a chaff missile can save them if you are distracted. And I've had ships save themselves this way. So it is useful to have, but definitely during that main combat encounter, I would manually fire my chaff. I mentioned before that these missiles cost one point. A fully loaded VLS-123 with, with these chaff missiles costs 27 points, which is very, very cheap and very similar to the cost of a defender with ammo. To try and put things in perspective, a Thunderhead missile is 6 points, 
which means if you're able to distract five of the five Thunderheads, you've paid for the entire cost of the Chaff Launcher. And with one Chaff Missile able to distract multiple missiles, you should be able to pay its cost very quickly, and those later missiles are just basically pure profit in terms of the amount of money you spend on your defenses. If you haven't tried these Chaff Missiles, give them a go, but they work best in combination with obviously a good PDT solution and the other missile defense option, the SDM-112 Repost. For those of you who've watched my High Fleet videos, the Repost should be very familiar. It is essentially a sprint anti-missile missile. It's a guided intercept missile and it is guided by the launching ship and has no active guiding equipment itself, which means that if you are being heavily jammed, this missile may not intercept its target. At two points per missile, it is more expensive than the Chaff missile, but it's still pretty cheap, especially if you consider the fact that it is intercepting six-point missiles or potentially even more expensive torpedoes. The, the cost-benefit is actually quite good. It is a very fast, very maneuverable missile that will intercept most missiles with a very high chance of success. The downside is that it is a one-for-one one or sometimes multiple-for-one, and you can actually got a lot of control over how this works, which means that you will run out of these quite quickly if you're not very careful with them. Once the missile gets in range, it explodes, spraying the target with shrapnel, hopefully destroying it, and means it doesn't require perfect accuracy. It ranges out to 4,500 meters and will be automatically fired by the AI. Unlike the chaff, I think it's best just to let the AI handle firing these. There's too much going on under a missile barrage to both be launching chaff and firing your reposts, and the AI does a pretty good, pretty good job of firing these off. There are some quite complicated firing rules for this weapon. You can customize them in battle through the PDMSL settings in the orders window, or if you go into the settings menu in game, there's actually a section there where you can customize the orders for these, these missiles. And I recommend you do that so that you have a good default setting. The, uh, there are four different options you can set for the PDMSL settings for this weapon. You can set it to auto fire, manual, or only at torpedoes. I'll talk about that in a second. You can choose how many salvos to fire at a target. So for example, you can say for each missile, I will launch one repost at it and then I will forget about it. Or we're gonna launch until the missile is destroyed or we're gonna launch three, etc. You can also choose how many missiles are in each salvo. And the final option is for a last resort salvo, where if you had a rule that said, I will only launch, launch one missile at this incoming fast mover and it doesn't detonate it and it gets within a certain range of the ship, this last resort order will override that I will be fire one missile rule and actually fire another missile to attempt to destroy it. There's something else you can do with reposts. You can actually manually target enemy ships and fire them at them, just the way, same way you would with, say, a hurricane, etc. They won't do any damage to the enemy ship, but they are very fast moving missiles and they could be a good way to scout out your enemy's PD or just help overwhelm the enemy's uh, firing solutions when you are actually about to fire a big missile barrage. So keep in mind that you can use reposts aggressively as a bluff weapon, but it is a bit of a waste considering how valuable they are on the defense. When I was discussing the PDMSL options there, the most important one for you is the first one, which is the auto fire, manual fire, or torpedo fire choices. The definition of manual here is that the repost will only launch at targets when you select one with a prioritized point defense command, which is the Z key hotkey. Honestly, I do not have the micro to manually target missiles for my reposts to intercept. If you do, amazing. You're going to do really, really well in this game. I like to leave it on either auto or torpedo choice. Auto is just fire reposts at all incoming missiles. I feel this is very wasteful because it will fire at everything that comes at you and you'll run out of missiles very, very quickly. The torpedo choice means that they will only fire at the size three killer torpedoes. Um, they are fired from a certain um, launcher. You may not even realize there are torpedoes in this game. They're ship killers. They're very, very scary. I'm gonna go into them in more detail in a specific video about them. But if you set your reposts to only target torpedoes, your ship will keep them in reserve until one of these torpedoes gets into range and fire the reposts only at that meaning you have an emergency torpedo defense and people like to sneak these torpedoes into bigger missile barrages because it's hard to tell the difference between them. So having your ship sort of devoted, uh, devoted weapon to taking out torpedoes is very, very valuable. Now they are very expensive. Well, not very expensive. They're more expensive than your chaff missiles. For instance, if you were to fully load a VLS-123 with just reposts, it'll cost about 57 points, which is quite expensive. What I like to do is do a mixed load of about 19 AA-12 chaff missiles and four reposts that are just set to torpedo intercept. One thing to be aware of is that if you have a whole fleet together and they're set to torpedo intercept, they will all launch 
One missile, say, say your salvo is set to one, one missile, torpedo intercept. Each ship will launch one riposte at the incoming torpedo, which is not the end of the world, but it does mean if your enemy is taking more torpedoes than you have ripostes, you are eventually going to run out. But I feel like, especially early in the game, having overwhelming firepower to destroy these torpedoes is better, as later on there'll be less ships firing torpedoes at you, and your PD should be less overwhelmed and able to deal with it. Ripostes are very, very powerful and very, very interesting. They do have that downside, is that they're going to run out of ammo the fastest of any of your ships. Okay, now that we have successfully gone through all the different PD weapons, I want to have a look at some integrated PD solutions in combat, just to show you how effective they can be at dealing with massive missile spams. Just in order to start this off, we're looking the wrong way, I'm just going to order this ship forward. We're deployed into an empty combat zone where there are two enemy missile fleets, an absolutely overwhelming amount of missiles, way too many missiles for this one ship to be able to deal with on its own. But we're going into it with a very well thought out integrated point defense system. If we just have a quick overview of the ship, you can see we have multiple defender turrets. We have rebound turrets, which have given the best field of fire that I can. We also have a VLS-123, VLS which is mounting four riposts and also, uh, I think it's 19 um, chaff missiles. If we have a look at, at our PDMSL settings here, we are set to fire mode torpedo, one salvo, one missile, last salvo authorized, which means that the missiles will only intercept torpedoes. Um, we've got decoy set to auto. I'm going to leave that on for right now. Point defense turrets are also set to auto. You can manually control these by setting these to man, but then you have to use the Z key to manually target your PD, and there's just too much to keep track of there. My hope is that I can show you that this ship on its own can do pretty well against a mass missile barrage as long as it gets its chaff on in time. Um, I want to fast forward until we actually get into combat with the enemy, but I wanted to spend some time just going over the setup. So we're mostly wanting to deal with as much as we can with the chaff, get it distracted from the ship. Anything that's left, we want to try and task the PD and the rebounds onto. If the rebounds and the PD and the defenders are focusing on missiles that are being distracted by the chaff, we'll use the Z key to try and retask them onto more pressing missiles that are coming in. It's something you can try to do just to, to, to get them to stop shooting at those missiles that have already missed but it's very difficult to get that to work. All the while, we'll also be, auto we'll be manually launching chaff missiles in an attempt to distract the enemy shots that are coming through. So I'm gonna fast forward until we actually encounter the enemy and I'll catch you there. Okay, we've picked up an enemy contact, so we need to get ready for incoming missiles. I'm just gonna fire at it because I can. We've got another contact picked up, so we're between the two fleets, which is like the worst place we can be. So I'm usually gonna order a course correction. I'm gonna try not to make it too sharp because what I don't wanna happen is for us to lose too much speed as we're moving. But what we need to get ready for is incoming missiles so I can start launching chaff. Now, at the moment, they're not attacking us. We're probably not quite in missile range yet. We have the advantage in that we have a longer range radar on this ship and we're mounting railguns, so we should hopefully be able to do some damage to them before they get close. But that's not really the point of this example. I know I'm not commanding the ship particularly well. It's more about how the PD is going to work. So I'm just turning so that we're not going to drive straight in between the two of them and then launch missiles from top and bottom. I want to try and keep the angle as close to 45 and 90 degrees as possible to help with the coverage from our point defense weapons. Hopefully the music isn't too loud. So we're just going to wait now until these targets get in range and start launching missiles at us. They are faster than us, so they will close the distance quite quickly. Okay, more targets coming in now. We're picking up the smaller ships that are alongside, and here come the missiles. So I'm going to start launching chaff. So I'm pressing Shift Z to launch chaff. We have so many missiles coming for us. Get this chaff field up as quickly as possible. I'm going to hold back and launch my next chaff until they're a little bit closer. And launch my next chaff. We've got riposte launching. My riposte are set to torpedo only. That means there are torpedoes in the enemy's missile barrage. Here comes the first load of missiles. The second load are coming in hot. We're going to try and distract as many of them as we can with the chaff. The first barrage is pretty much completely distracted. The second barrage is also almost completely distracted. We've got some hits on the bottom of our ship. Took some pretty big damage there. Honestly, not very good. We've got a um, core failure. We're going to explode in 1 minute 50. But we did distract a huge amount of these missiles. If we had a fleet here, we probably honestly could have gotten ourselves in a situation where we wouldn't have taken any damage at all. 
despite the fact there's only one of us, that's what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, about, I don't say about 30 Thunderheads missed. Um, and only maybe because I wasn't retasking my PD to fire did the last slot hit. Now, I think we've got some more missiles coming in. These are torpedoes by the looks of it. Um, I think we've got some torpedoes incoming. I don't know if the ship's going to be able to defend itself. We'll see what we can do. And then we'll move on to our next example of a bigger fleet. So I know that technically we lost that engagement. But that's not really the issue here. The issue is how well we were able to do in order to disrupt as much of that incoming missile barrage as possible. It's very, very hard to completely invalidate a missile barrage. But one ship was able to deal with most of those missiles and distract the rest. And it only took two or three missile hits. Yes, those missile hits were pretty devastating, but our ship is still combat effective. And if we manage to deal with this core overload, we'll be in a position where we can continue this fight. Next example I'm going to have a look at with you is a slightly bigger fleet with maybe smaller ships, just to see how they do against the same overwhelming swarm of missiles. Okay, so here's another example of an integrated PD solution. I have a small beam uh, destroyer group mostly using Auroras, but a heavy reliance on Chaff to try and distract as many missiles as possible. We're up against the same massive missile strike force, so we're outpointed here three or four times just in sheer value of missiles. So there's a good chance we're going to lose. But again, what I'm trying to show you is there are ways to overcome missiles. And if you're building a full fleet and you're working with your teammates, because this is mostly a team game, you will hopefully find yourself in a situation where you can correctly defend from these. And mitigate as much incoming missile as possible unfortunately with the way high this game i almost called the game high flight with the game this the way this game is created there's no tried and true 100 effective method for destroying all missiles all you can do is just the best you can so when we get into combat here what you're going to see me doing is tapping between my ships manually launching chaff if i have the mental space for it i'll try and manually task uh PD as well by using the Z hotkey, but mostly it's going to be making sure that chaff is launching, distracting as many missiles as possible, and hopefully making it through that encounter alive, in which case these beam destroyers will very, sorry, yeah, these beam destroyers will very, very quickly mop up the enemy. So I'll see you when the engagement begins. Alright, we have enemy contact. I'm actually going to just close on this target because oh, we've got two, yeah, we'll close on this one here. Range 6,000, so they're pretty close. Um, just clicking the wrong place, this is look really stupid. So we're looking at 6,000 meters for range. So we're actually almost in range. And what we're going to do is as soon as we detect the missiles, we're going to start launching chaff. Now this is two different fleets here. 8954 and 8041 are two different fleets. We actually open fire on this now. We're probably not going to get a lot of accuracy, but the idea here is to kill these. Okay, missiles are incoming. So shift Z, 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 shift Z. You see, I'm just constantly cycling through my ships and launching chaff. Try and get your sight on view here. And we're hoping as many missiles as possible will be diverted by the chaff. Looks like our first ship might be unlucky. He's taken a couple of hits. He's still combat effective. And we've managed to weather that first barrage. We took a little bit of damage. We lost the PDT, but we're mostly still in the fight. Now we're gonna get ready for the next barrage because they will launch again in a second, but most of those missiles missed. Let's have a look at our other ships. So we took some damage here as well. We lost a PDT, we've got an internal fire. This ship's completely undamaged. Considering the amount of missiles that came through there, that's a pretty successful defense, I think. Now just look at the sheer amount of contacts on the screen. Uh, this is a pretty scary situation. Uh, we're actually don't wanna to close too much more. We're actually gonna get them to head out this way. I'm gonna give a facing command to hold the heading here. You can see that our primary target is, in fact, this. In fact, I'm going to get clear of that heading command. Let's just ignore that. I'll let the ships control their own heading right now. And we're now in a position where we can mop this fleet up. Because the enemy has invested so heavily in missiles, we've now closed to beam weapon range, and we can start tearing apart. You can see here, most of the enemy fleet is actually corvettes. And once we've taken care of the two CLs, we're in a pretty great position for our destroyers just to mop them up. So... There's an integrated PD solution that works really, really well. We actually still also have reposts in our pocket in case they launch torpedoes at us. We still have quite a lot of, I think I can actually check how many, um, that's interesting. And there should be a way to detect how many uh, chaff missiles we have left. I can't see it at the moment. I can't remember how it is, but we do still have them. I can hit shift Z here, prove that we still have chaff. And we're just in a great position now because we're gonna rip this enemy fleet to shreds. Oh. That's my chaff revealing it coming up as an unknown track, which is something you need to be aware of because it will reveal to the enemy. Uh, that looks like we've got escape pods coming out of this ship here, so let's switch targets to this one here because these are definitely the biggest targets. 
And yeah, uh, that's a successful missile defense. We took a little bit of damage. I don't actually have damage control teams on these ships because I built them really quickly to demonstrate how this works. So unfortunately, they're probably going to fall apart eventually. But that's a successful missile defense. And hopefully that gives you a good example of how well a good PD solution works together. And that's something I've said multiple times in this video is I've said PD solution, not PD, because you need an integrated solution of multiple defensive weapons working together in unity in order to put yourself in the best position to defend yourself against the enemy. Hopefully this has been useful. I really, really appreciate you for watching this video. Thank you so much. It's taken me weeks of work to put this together, so I hope it's useful. If you really liked it, I'm looking at doing some videos on radar and jamming next, and then I'm going to start going through the different ship holes in the game as well. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.